Hey guys, it's Booligan with Airsoft Retreat, BooliganAirsoft.com and Airsoft Insider Magazine. Today, I'm bringing you a project update on a gun that I spent a lot of time building over the last year and uh, just can't seem to let go. It is my G&G Combat Machine. This is the one based on the 300 BOT that I have pretty much taken all the 300 BOT parts off of, aside from the receiver. Project Recap. It has a Crytac PDW stock, which is fun because you push this little button and you have an extendable stock. Push it again and it locks back down. Always fun. You have a, an MOE pistol grip. Uh, it's an old Magpul model. They don't make these anymore, but uh, by a PTS from way back in the day. The receiver and all of the internals are completely untouched. And the new addition to this gun is this front end here. Now, this may look slightly familiar because it came off of a gun that I had previously built. This front end assembly, this part at least, the handguard, came from the Lancer Tactical Elite MMC, the multi-mission carbine. It attaches here at the barrel nut and slides over the upper receiver to give you a nice flat top rail, and it is very, very solid. Now, normally this thing would come with about a 10 and a half inch barrel, wasn't nearly short enough for me. So I've got the tiny stubby little barrel from a G&G Firehawk fitted to a metal mock suppressor off of a very old D-Boys um, M4 SD. Uh, it's a SOCOM style one, it's got the little dimples in it. It's fun, nice little can. And the whole package, especially when fitted with the AP-10 magazine converter, looks like kind of a poor man's uh, SIG MPX, and that's always fun because, well, can't get an Airsoft SIG MPX right now. Um, I took the Lancer Tactical flip-up iron sights, so it has iron sights, and I installed an Element Seymour style red dot sight, which you've seen on probably a thousand of my guns because I really, really love this sight. The thing works really well. Using the AP-10 kit, I can run MP5 magazines, whether it is this guy, which is the AP-10 magazine. It sort of looks like a UMP mag, but is smaller. I can run Echo One straight mags. These guys, they lock in place very well. Looks pretty cool. Or if I'm feeling like being a true MP5 purist, the Curve mag, which actually matches pretty well with the uh, SIG MPX's Curve magazine. However, those guys are Palmer, so the one that sort of looks the most realistic is the AP-10 mag. Now, given that this is an AR-based replica, push the mag release, pull out the whole adapter, and you can run a standard AR-style magazine. Very, very easy. Um, if you need a mag swap on the field, it's literally just a button press away. But if you want to be a unique special snowflake, which you know I do, I get to run these bad boys. Let's go outside, let's see how this thing shoots. And um, in closing, before we do that, you could build something like this for not a lot of money. The most expensive parts on this really was the stock, um, which I got directly from Crytac. Um, I wanna say those run about a hundred bucks for this whole setup. Um, the front end is just gonna be a little bit hard to find because it came off of another gun and I have not seen this set up for sale on its own. Uh, you could certainly go with like a CASV or an S system or something like that, but it, it, it's just not the same. This guy's polymer, lightweight, low profile, has a nice slick handguard here in the middle. You do have rails that you can put on the side if you want, but in all honesty, rail on the top, rail on the bottom is enough rail for me. And the thing just works so, so well as a little PDW front end. So again, let's go outside. Let's go see how this thing shoots. So clearly, this custom gun, based on a G&G combat machine, shoots as good as it looks. So all you have to do now is get out there, build your own, and get shooting.